Hello and welcome to a week eight edition of the Establish the Run Waiver Wire Show. My name is Adam Levitan, as always, joined by the season long bro you know and love, John Daigle, for a wide receiver heavy waiver wire week. Daigle, how's it going today? Although we are the two at the company who do not have hair, our hair is still on fire. The NBA streets on launch night are going insane. Dink won't stop winning 100K every single evening. And after last night's game, we have a lot to talk about because the entire a division, the conference, and fantasy football got shaken up altogether. Yeah, and especially now that they're playing two these two late games on Monday a lot of the time, yep. if you have a choice in your league, your waiver should run on Wednesday. They should run Wednesday night, not Tuesday night. I mean, 100%, if you have a choice in your league, you should allow everyone in the league to get as much information as possible before they make their waiver claims. Right now, we don't know exactly how long Mike Evans is going to be back or if Jawan Jennings is going to play this week, et cetera. So, yeah, make your waivers Wednesday. Make it easier on you. We'll still do this show on Tuesdays, but generally, I think waivers on Wednesday is just a way better idea. All right, Daigle. Let's go to the top 10 here. If you guys are watching on YouTube, you can see the very tech-lorded graphic that we have going here. And what it shows is a whole slew of wide receivers in the top 10 waiver wire targets per Daigle. Let's start at the top Daigle with the Bucks situation. So Chris Godwin is going to miss the rest of the year due to a dislocated ankle he sustained in garbage time last night. I'm not going to tilt here. If you want to hear me tilt, you can go to the solo pod. Mike Evans uh, pulled his hamstring, looked like he was like writhing. It wasn't like one of those hamstrings where like, ah, man, I tweaked it. Let me limp off here. He was like writhing in pain. We don't know how long Mike Evans is going to be out could be a while, man. I mean, it could be a long while on Mike Evans. That leaves them with Trey Palmer ran the most routes out of the backups last night, then Jalen McMillan, then Sterling Shepard. Daigle, how do you think about Bucks wide receivers off the waiver wire right now? And Baker has been admittedly so good that I still have confidence in this situation staying elevated for fantasy, but... We do need to be a little bit skeptical that maybe, like Nico Collins being out for the Texans, maybe the entire infrastructure just kind of gets buried without the best wide receivers out there for the Bucks. Having said that, the bet I want to make is still on the rookie Jalen McMillan. In the preseason, balled out, targeted on 37.5% of his routes for the ninth most yards per route run. And I know that it's the preseason, but also in terms of getting him injected into this offense, he fits the Chris Godwin role from the slot. And his last two years at Washington with the Huskies, 91% of his routes from that area of the field. And before injuries in his last year, he quietly out-targeted in 2022 Romo Dunze with a 21% target share to a Dunze's 19 and a half percent mark from Michael Penix. So as a ceiling option over Trey Palmer, that's the bet I want to make. But it's as you said, we think Evans will probably miss an extended amount of time too. So if that's the case, although Palmer hasn't really showed a ceiling performance just yet. Last year as a rookie, he was still targeted on 13.5% of his routes, um, 17th among that class. So I'm also okay just adding him in just in case the outcome is different. So, yeah, a lot to unpack here. Yeah. I think the unknown, the one that we don't know if he could be a star or not, is Jalen McMillan. I am pretty sure that Trey Palmer and Sterling Shepard are not stars in the NFL. In fact, I'm really sure that they're not. <laughs> at, at the wide receiver position, you need to actually be able to play and play really well to earn fantasy points, period. We see this constantly. I mean, you know, it was like, oh, Nico Collins went down. Xavier Hutchinson comes in. He can't do anything, you know? And it just, it happens all the time. Bub Means comes in for Chris Olave. It's not the same, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think the Bucs are going to change this a lot, meaning more Kate Otten, tons of running back stuff. Bucky Irving and Rashad White catching the football, tons of running back stuff, and probably a lower pass rate generally. I mean, we've seen the Bucs be among the most pass-heavy teams in the league. So Daigle only has fab guidance here of 15 to 40% on those guys. I think that's right. It's a really wide range. We cannot expect these Bucs guys to step in to that level that Evans and Godwin were playing at. And I think we'll see some systemic risk that Daigle talked about too. So I like adding Jalen McMillan, not overly excited about the other guys too much but if i'm desperate for sure palmer and sterling shep would be on my radar i should note daigle's point on mcmillan playing the slot at washington i think is important i will note that the only place sterling shepherd can really play at this point i think is in the slot and when sterling shepherd's mm -hmm. out there in three wide receiver sets we'll probably see shepherd in the slot mcmillan out wide but mcmillan can play in the slot for sure plenty and 
yeah, he would be my favorite of those. The other wide receiver situation, Daigle, is the 49ers stuff. Brandon Ayuk out for the season due to a torn ACL. Debo Samuel has pneumonia. He could miss another game. We'll see there. Meanwhile, Juwan Jennings missed the game on Sunday due to hip injury. Didn't practice at all last week. I have no idea if Juwan Jennings is coming back this week. And Ricky Pearsall, the shot one, got back from his gunshot wound. And he actually played a ton, earned five targets in that game on Sunday. So, Daigle, what do you think about 49ers wide receiver going forward? Another urgent matter to move waivers to Wednesday since we also don't know about Juwan Jennings status three consecutive DMPs last week with that hip injury the current reports are that they are hopeful quote unquote that he returns in week eight but we're not sure having said that with Debo Samuel hospitalized and presumably not going to play this week although we're not sure about that either we should have interest in both Jennings and Pearsall Pearsall's really interesting because it was his first career start off injured reserve, and he was forced to lead the team in routes run, earn that 16% target share, but also profiled as a good player. Not only the 49ers moving up to take him number 31 overall in this past draft, but he averaged 17 yards per touch, five career rushing scores in the SEC, and this is the proper SEC, not the current one. That's a joke. And then I also bake into my like collegiate analysis. I like to see how players do in the big games, and he had six catches for 99 yards against number one ranked Georgia as well. I remember Silva also really liking him coming out of college. But whenever we're stepping back and saying who can reach their ceiling – and this type of scenario, you also have to remember that Jawan Jennings was previously the wide receiver one overall with a 40% target share in one game this year. It was without Debo and Ayuk. Uh, and so, of course, it was Jennings who was elevated in that game without Pearsall available as well. But we're taking shots here. I do, though, have the Bucks wide receivers prioritized over the 49ers guys. Just thinking that when we get back Debo, Kittle, and McCaffrey all together here in the next two to four weeks, then likely Jennings and Pearsall become the team's fourth option, whereas maybe McMillan and Palmer can still be the number one pending Evan status. Yeah, I think short term, I feel better about the 49ers guys, right? As long as like Kittle, by the way, is day to day with some sprained foot thing. But as long as CMC is out, Ayuk is done, Debo might miss another game. I think short term, Juwan Jennings and Ricky Pearsall are better options. Long term, I agree with Daigle, you might actually get some longer term production, albeit not a strong production out of the Bucks guys. So that's, I agree with Dale. That's how I would think about that. I think Jawan Jennings can play, man. Even when everyone's healthy, mm -hmm. he, he earned six targets in games when everyone was healthy, you know? And so I like Pierre Soul too. He's an unknown, similar to the stuff I talked about with McMillan. I like adding both of these guys and seeing what happens on uh, Jennings and Pierre Soul, especially if I need help right away. The rest of the wide receivers on the top 10 list here are guys that we've kind of already covered. We understand the Dontavian Wicks situation. He's back rotating with Christian Watson. Romeo Dobbs, if he was dropped, is going to be out there leading the team in routes. Pop Douglas continues to be Drake May's top target, I think, out of the slot. Although Hunter Henry certainly has something to say about that. Christian Watson's on the list, too. Anybody else you want to highlight from the rest of the top 10 here, Daigle? And Christian Watson rostered in a majority of leagues, and rightfully so. I just shoved him in there because otherwise I know we would get questions about Christian Watson or this guy. Thus, I put him in there to answer those questions for everyone. And I do think it's rotatable at the back end depending on your own needs, which I will answer everyone directly in the Discord, 5 p.m. Eastern. But the back end guys like Juju, who we didn't even get to evaluate properly after 12 snaps with that hamstring injury, we have no idea if he was purposely limited if he'll be back this upcoming week so yeah, someone he won't. To hang he oh won't. He won't. they are they already announced juju's out for week eight so it must be uh, pretty bad yeah okay well in that case then uh, i will probably move him down and we can make him rotatable with a couple other guys including cedric tillman who is not just a deep league ad i'm really interested in tillman Remember, he overlapped with Jalen Hyatt, who got drafted by the Giants. They actually got picked back-to-back -back in the third round last year. He overlapped with Jalen Hyatt for three seasons at Tennessee. And in their first two years, Hyatt totaled 500 receiving yards. That's it. And Tillman was the one who profiled significantly better. It's just that, including, by the way, for Tillman, 1,000 yards and 12 touchdowns in the SEC as a 21-year-old. But then he got injured in the third game of his final year. 
And only then did Hyatt get elevated as the Bolitnikoff Award winner as the nation's best receiver. But Tillman was the reason that Hyatt was basically blocked at that point. In my mind, I viewed him as DeAndre Hopkins' light coming out of college, someone that doesn't burn you but consistently beats you with his route running. And then this past week, the first game without Amari Cooper, we saw him pop up with 12 targets, 25% target share to David Njoku's team high 14. So I really think with Jerry Judy not having a 18-point fantasy point performance like Tillman did this past week since 2022, literally the last time Judy did that much. I think that Tillman could just outscore Judy the rest of the season, and that's something we should be interested in, especially when we can swap Judy for Tillman on waivers. Yeah, I think that's interesting for sure. And DTR has a finger issue. Um, mm -hmm. He might not play in week eight. Obviously, if Jameis plays, I'll be way more interested in Tillman than if DTR plays this week as a streamer. And the only other one I want to mention as rotatable, well, a couple, Rashad Bateman now, at least four catches and three consecutive games, double-digit PBR point performances as well. Lamar Jackson trending towards his third MVP, so maybe you can even just plug in Bateman as a flex option if injuries happen around you, not the worst stash. But Leggett for the Panthers, also interesting because it was only three targets, but it was a 17.5% target share. That's why we use share numbers to highlight those raw numbers. And then it also matched Deontay Johnson. So we think that he can still continue earning targets as he's done so in the, the three of four starts with, that he did not leave with a shoulder injury from Andy Dalton. Not to mention that everything is clearly so bad in Carolina that we could see a shakeup. We could see Bryce Young back under center. We could see Deontay Johnson traded just because the Panthers are clearly going nowhere. We just don't know. So maybe if you have no pressing needs, you instead stash Lee get and try to get ahead of any uncertainty. Absolute no brainer for the Panthers to trade Deontay Johnson in the final year of his contract, see what they can get for him before the week nine deadline. I like stashing Leggett where you can. All right. Let's go to some, uh, oh, and yeah, uh, uh, totally, oh yeah, totally agree on, on the Tillman stuff. We already talked about that. Okay. Um, deep league guys here, Daigle, we have Tillman on the list here. Drake May, Tyler Goodson did what we hoped would happen, took over ahead of Trey Sermon in that game on Sunday. However, JT expected to practice this week. We also get the Jameson Williams suspension. Anybody from the deep league stuff you want to highlight? We are also waiting on the DK Metcalf knee injury. Have heard it's not serious, but we don't know his status moving forward. Jake Bobo is not a one-for-one -one replacement. He's basically the opposite player of DK Metcalf. But the, the way Ryan Grubb is operating that Seattle pass rate and offense altogether, it makes you excited about anyone stepping into three wide receiver sets. Jake Bobo included for 14-team leagues. He pops. You mentioned the Jameson Williams suspension. So Tim Patrick, who's earning more opportunity the last couple of games, we've seen him make some big downfield plays, not just against Cowboys, but this past week against Minnesota as well. He seems like someone who, if he steps in, maybe he just doesn't give the job back either and works his way into like that dreaded Christian Watson, Dontavian Ricks ro rotation with Jameson the rest of the season because he's so good. And remember, he was so good before he tore his ACL a couple times in Denver too. And then also, again, just prepping for anything that may happen in Carolina. Jalen Coker, 14-team leagues, has beat out Jonathan Mingo in three wide receiver sets the last two games. I know it wasn't that great this past week, but he's still at least out there. And Drake May, the only other one that comes to mind, because now we have two starts from Drake May, not only eight carries, but he's been a top-12 quarterback in, in both games uh i would actually as i mentioned in the drop list i would drop patrick mahomes for drake may i think that's where we've gotten right now especially in one quarterback leagues yeah drop patrick mahomes for drake may look at what we've become Dago. look uh, look at what's happened to the nfl look what you look either die a hero or live long enough to become the villain yeah uh just a couple of thoughts on some of these guys here obviously johnny smith getting to a took of iloa back this week at least puts him on the radar tim patrick even when the Lions were full strength, was earning targets. You know, and I was kind of impressed by that on Tim Patrick. Always thought that he could really play, just the injuries have bit him so bad. I think he'll have a real role here without Jameson Williams. And then Tyler Goodson stuff. I'd be actually be kind of, not excited, but I'd be adding Tyler Goodson if I didn't think JT was going to be back this week or next. You could still add Tyler Goodson, but I suspect JT's ankle is going to heal up sometime the next one to two weeks here. So just a note on that. And Troy Franklin, 
I, yes. We forget on Thursday night because so much happened since then, but a team high six targets from Bo Nix. They mentioned they wanted to mix it up heading into that game. I don't expect Cortland Sutton to walk away with an egg in every performance moving forward. I don't want to drop him as well, but Troy Franklin, they really do seem interested in getting involved more here. Um, For sure. Yeah, I, I like that one. And, you know, Sean Payton has lied so many times about how he's going to use his wide receivers and mm -hmm. players, but it would make unreal sense to play Troy Franklin a ton here down the stretch. And he's helping them win. You know, I mean, they have four wins. And I believe the Broncos play the Saints this week, which is uh, one of the better matchups that you can get. Or no, they I'm sorry, they play the Panthers. Broncos play the Panthers this week, which is obviously yeah. the Stone Cold best matchup Gosh, that you can get. Five win Broncos team. What the hell is going on? Yep. Fight on Broncos. I'm I'm a lifelong Broncos no, fan since, it. since, Get out since here. this year. Okay. Uh all right. Let's get to some questions from the people here. From Hey Utah Gimme Two says for pure rest of season upside, would you drop Roma Dunze or Zach Moss or Jalen McMillan? So I, I think that this is good question because there's a lot of people that are like, How much I prioritize Jalen McMillan versus maybe some guys who we feel better about talent wise who are on their bench. Most likely dig What do you think about this one? That is a really good one. And I would drop Romo Dunze because it's a mirroring situation where we are waiting for one or two players to get out of the way for Romo Dunze to really step in for that opportunity. Jalen McMillan, that has now happened. So yes, I would trade Romo Dunze for Jalen McMillan. Totally fair. Zach Moss, I did put in the drop list this week. We've now seen Chase Brown's share of backfield touches increase in every game since week two, including out touching Moss this past game, 17 to nine. It really seems like Moss is now the contingency option that Brown started out being. Yeah, I still think Zach Moss should be high on the one injury away list. If Chase Agreed. Brown were to get hurt, you know, Zach Moss would be someone I'd want to have. Mm -hmm. So it's dangerous to drop Zach Moss because if Chase Brown gets hurt next week, it's like, oh, man, what did I do to myself here? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah. Fantasy Burner says, should I play Darnold on a short week or Russ Wilson to cover for Jaden Daniels injury? So sadly, I'm sure a lot of people out there are dealing with Jaden Daniels injuries right now looking for quarterback streamer help doesn't sound like Dalen's going to be out too long but given given everything around I my guess is he'll miss week eight here will Jaden Daniels any ideas for streamers for the people out here Daigle Darnold Russ Wilson any other ideas and I don't think Darnold is available in too many leagues. We've also seen the Rams shake up their secondary, added Darius Williams, uh, bench Tredavious White altogether because he just wasn't helping them that first month of the year. Having said that, we haven't really either seen them tested just yet in making those shakeups, so it's unclear if they've improved to league average status or if they're mm -hmm. just really bad and play Gardner Minshew. So I, I am still absolutely testing Darnold against this Ram secondary that I'm skeptical of. Yeah, for sure. Darnold there for me. And, and I do think that if DTR can't play Jameis Winston against the Ravens team, which everyone tries to throw on would be an interesting streamer. Daigle has that Jameis in there at number two uh -huh. on the quarterback list ahead of Mariota, Bo Nix, Russ Wilson, any more quarterback thoughts, Daigle? You already mentioned it. I like Russ. It's not really a great streaming week, but that's assuming that Russ, Mariota, Winston are not available in your yeah. super flex leagues. Uh, I bet at least Russ is still out there and it's a fine position for him. Okay. Fast moving Chevy says, is there a fairly available tight end you consider picking up to replace Kincaid? So the Amari Cooper stuff, I don't think is great for Dalton Kincaid. It's just more guys that can earn targets, right? Keon Coleman started to break out a little bit. That's not great either. Kincaid did get, I believe Dawson Knox got banged up in this game, as did Curtis Samuel. And so I, I, I don't, I have a ton of Don Kincaid. I have a team, a season long team where I have Njoku and Kincaid. I'm playing Njoku over Kincaid, obviously. Um, yeah. But I still don't, I don't want to give up on Kincaid, I guess is my gut, but maybe that's just being stubborn. Dago, what do you think about this one? Would you be streaming ahead of Kincaid at this point? So a couple of weeks ago, I put Mark Andrews and Kyle Pitts in the drop list because Tucker Craft was available. I just mentioned that I would drop these players for this guy, and I still feel good about that. Andrews has come on the past couple of games. Tucker Craft continued to just burn the world down as one of the best tight ends in fantasy. But for 
this option and dropping, you know, or finding a replacement for Kincaid, what you're then asking is, would I rather start Kate on? That's the best option here. And without Evans and Godwin, I think you might actually want to do so. Yeah. We saw him pop up for 100 yards. He's been one of those players going back to the second half of last year who also just never leaves the field. He's out there for a route every single time. So while I would have questioned it if the injuries did not happen, I think the path has been opened here. Agreed. I'd rather have Otten than Kincaid, at least in the short term here. What about Hunter Henry or Kincaid? We've seen two really big Hunter Henry games in the last, what, three or four weeks or something like that. Uh, what do you think about Hunter Henry versus Kincaid? It's the last couple of weeks, although we do need to zoom out from London because, again, Demarius Douglas only ran 12 routes dealing with that illness that Ken Walker also dealt with this week. Uh, having said that, yes, Hunter Henry has popped from Drake May, so perfectly fine with Hunter Henry. Uh, who do the Bills – see, when we start asking – uh, streaming questions or start sits for players I don't write about in the waiver column, then uh, I have to remember the matchup. Yeah, so. the B Bills Bills play the Seahawks in Seattle uh, on Sunday. Okay, that's actually a fun one. That's a tough yeah. one. Hunter yeah. Henry and Cade is a really tough one. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it just it, it doesn't seem like Don Kincaid is ever going to get ten targets in a game, whereas right. Hunter Henry has done it twice. You know, so mm -hmm. yeah. Um, all right. Brent says there are a lot of running backs popping up on the waiver wire. Where does that leave Braylon Allen? Looks like a fringe drop candidate. So shout out to Jeff Ulbrich and, you know, this new quote unquote regime for the Jets. They decided it's enough with this Braylon Allen stuff. We're going to start loading up Brees Hall, the workhorse that we know that he is, has had two really nice games here under Jeff Ulbrich. Of course, that means Braylon Allen's standalone value is total dust. Dago, what do you think about handling? running backs like Braylon on the waivers. That's where we start prioritizing strictly stashes. And I still believe that Braylon Allen, curious to get your thoughts on this too. I still think Braylon Allen is the number one stash to have yes, in all of fantasy agreed. football. And again, we've seen Kenneth Walker, guys like that, step in and handle 100% of their backfield touches. But I just think Allen is the much more explosive option if Brees Hall were injured. So I get it. If you need to drop Allen because he provides now nothing, has been out touched the last two weeks, 41 to six with the coaching change by Brees Hall. But Allen's still like as elite as it comes in terms of if he gets a chance, it's over. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one injury way list is is gonna be strong and like, you know, it's a long season, man. We're through seven weeks. It feels like time. We have a long way to go. There's still a ton of time for running backs to suffer the same injury bug that wide receivers have struck for the first seven weeks. So, you know, I, I still want to be holding the one injury way elite guys like Braylon Allen. So along those lines, Greasy Samosa says, for a bench stash, would you prioritize Blake Corum or Kamani Vidal? So they're just going to run J.K. Dobbins into the ground until he gets hurt. And maybe he won't get hurt at all. And at that point, you will have held Kamani Vidal for probably no reason all year. You could say the same thing about Blake Corum, who only played six snaps compared to Kyron's 49 in that game on Sunday, despite reports from Trent Green that said the Rams intended to go two series Kyron, one series Corum. So Bench stash, Daigle, what do you prefer between Corum and Vidal? And although Justin Herbert was efficient over 300 yards last night, we also know what the Chargers want to do when they're allowed to do that. And so with Joe Halt and Rashawn Slater back at full strength, I'm still interested in Vidal over Corum. Again, it's hard because they are the same exact player and that you can't play them with any standalone value, but you want to stash the correct one. I like Vidal over Corum, if only because I believe in the Chargers offense a little more. Still lots of volatility within the Rams as we await P Puka Nakua's return. Yeah. I mean, the thing for me on on Vidal versus Corum, or at least one thing that I would think about, do you think that if Kyron went down, Ronnie Rivers and Corum would both play, or do you think it'd be all Corum? Because if J.K. Dobbins went down, I don't think it'd be all Vidal. We would see Haskins, and we might see Gus Edwards in the mix also at that point. So I still feel like it's a little bit cleaner for Corum, but that's only if you think Rodney Rivers has been totally dusted, which I'm not sure about. But yeah, what do you think would happen if, if each of these guys went down, uh, Dobbins and Kyron? I know Vidal would have the receiving role over Haskins, and I think that's what's most important to me, whereas Corum... Maybe, but we just don't know. We haven't got to test that with Ronnie Rivers yet either since Kyron Williams continues handling that role. So yeah. again, we, we're nitpicking. They're both top tier guys for sure, along with Brandon Allen. Um, and it's basically a coin flip. I think personally, I would lean Vidal. Yeah, I, 
the only thing that I, other thing that comes to mind on Quorum is this offense, this Rams offense could actually be good soon. I mean, they're going to have mm-hmm. Cooper Cup back. There sounds like they're going to get Puka back. And then, you know, I mean, they might actually have like a real team at that point, you know, and, and a really good offense. So, yeah, we'll see. That's an interesting I, one. Yeah. When I say volatility, that obviously goes both ways. They could explode, uh, but they yeah. could also explode. For sure. Um, all right. Last question here comes from Kara says, is it time to drop Kirk? I believe that uh, she is referring to Christian Kirk yeah. here who continues to struggle. Listen, man, they have four guys there that can earn targets. Evan Ingram pops up for a ton of targets. He keeps getting 10 target games, you know, and then you also get the Brian Thomas Jr. breakout. It's been a pretty bad run out for Christian Kirk, especially if you combine that with Trevor Lawrence play. So I understand the question here. Any thoughts on dropping Christian Kirk? It is a, as we've talked about, busy wide receiver week. So I don't hate it, but I also want to be tepid with the drop list. Again, it's a, we were in these same kind of situations with who's one that comes to mind. Um, oh, DeAndre Swift. People were asking about him. Uh, people were asking about Javante Williams. And I just like to be careful because I don't want to be in a situation where we drop someone, but then we're right back to picking them up. It was the incorrect drop. I feel like Kirk is definitely more of a wide receiver four or matchup based streamer than he is a weekly starter. But I also don't think that's worth dropping a week after they only threw 20 pass attempts because after getting down 10-0, they just destroyed the Patriots and didn't need to do anything more through the air. Yeah, Bucks play the Falcons this week, and then they're at Chiefs home versus 49ers. I'm just trying to think through like who I'd rather start in those games, Jalen McMillan or Christian Kirk, because I do have Christian Kirk on some of my teams, and I'm sure later tonight I'll be looking at, should I be doing this just as a streamer for three weeks because Jalen McMillan is going to be the number one wide receiver for the Bucks. I mean, yeah. I would rather have Jalen McMillan. That's a really good point you just made. Yeah. Personally. So maybe I should jam Christian Kirk on the drop list. Ugh. It's dude. It's again, waivers need to be on Wednesday. It is insane out here that we are having to have hypothetical start sits on a Tuesday, but it has to be done. Yeah. Yeah. That's not, I'm more, I'm more sighing just because of the, what's happened to the wide receiver position. And we're sitting here talking about having to drop Christian Kirk for Jalen McMillan, but so be it. All right. That is going to do it for the week eight waiver wire show for full thoughts on waivers and full fab recommendations. Be sure to check out Daigle's waiver wire column on the site. You can also find him in Discord for the waiver wire Q&A every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern, I believe. Right, Daigle? 5 p.m. Yes. Eastern. 5 p.m. Eastern. If anyone has not checked out the NBA product yet, all you have to do is go up here, subscribe tab, NBA products. You'll see everything that we have going on for both DFS and props this season. For Daigle, for producer Luke. Producer Ryan. I am Adam. Good luck, everybody.